Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loved me, so I loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be with you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do know if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who choose you and appointed you to go and bear fruits that will remain. So whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Today the church celebrates the feast of the special apostle, St. Matthias. After the betrayal of Judas, Judas Iscariot, not Judas Tadeus. After the betrayal of Judas and his suicidal by hanging himself, the rest of the apostles, the eleven who remained after the event of the Pentecost, when they fully understood what the birth, death, and resurrection, ascension to heaven of our Lord meant. When they had the courage by the action of the Spirit to publicly confess his name and when they began to suffer persecution for Christ, they, the apostles, the eleven, the eleven that remained also understood, if they had not understood it before, that the reign number was a number they had a meaning, twelve, twelve, because there were twelve tribes of Israel on which those, on which the chosen people had been built and constructed. And twelve, therefore, had to be also the initial number of special followers, of closest followers from among the great group of the disciples, the apostles. Those whom the Lord carried out, the last supper, to whom he instituted himself, his praise, and to whom he has the first time to eat his body and to drink his blood, to commune. They understood that if they were twelve and one was missing, they would have to complete the number that they began to look for. So they began to look for him, they prayed, but before making an inspiration decision, they tell it, they tell it, St. Luke tell it, tells it, uh, tells us on the Acts of the Apostles, before they looked for someone who was capable, they had chosen two from among the two. They asked the Holy Spirit to manifest himself to know which of the two had to take Judas' place. But the characteristic they looked for was not only that he was a good person, a, a person of incapable behavior, a person from among the disciples who had followed Jesus and who was steep in, this, in his doctrine, who could therefore teach what Jesus had taught and not something else not something else of his own making, but, they say, who had been a witness of the resurrection. This was the essential because the essential, the definitive, that which convinced them was precisely the resurrection, the birth of our Lord, his death on the cross, touches our heart. It touches it, but it touches especially because we know who is the one who is born, and who is the one who is crucified. There are, very day, there are every day millions of children who are born, and surely, unfortunately, many in conditions of a greater poverty in which Jesus was born. And there are very, 
every day millions of innocent people who are killed or died without guilt for one cause or another, but none of them is the Son of God. It is the fact that Jesus is God which gives value to the Incarnation, to the Word, to the Teaching, to the Death, and the fact of the Christ is God, is what is confirmed by the Resurrection, from the historical event of the Resurrection, the disciples are able to understand and look back to read, to interp in interpret, to understand all that has gone before and to give it to all the value of life. It is God who has become men. It is God who has given his life for us. It is God who has saved us by praying, paying the price of his redemptive death. It is God because he has risen. There is a moment in which Jesus, alluding to a stage or an event that took place with the people of Israel when they were wandering in the desert and were attacked by poisonous snakes, Jesus says, alluding to that moment, he says, When I am lifted up on height, I will draw everyone to me. Jesus lifted on height. Several times he was lifted up on height, surely by the arms of his mother, as mothers do with their children, of his grandmother, his grandfather, of his adopted father, Saint Joseph, or lifted up on height. So that shows that, for example, the magic of the East, Jesus was lifted up on high also when he entered glorious in Jerusalem. He is lifted up on height, is a special weight when he is crucified. He is lifted up on the height to be hung on the pole of the cross. But he is lifted up on height when he lifts the sepulchre. When I am lifted up on height, I will draw all to me. His death draws us, draws us, draws us strikes us, breaks the seven locks door of our heart of stone and causes the heart of stone to be transformed into a heart of flesh that melt in love and gratitude towards God. But it is the last lifting up, the resurrection that confirmed us in the divine of Christ, and that is why the apostle chooses a successor to Judas, to the betrayer as someone who was witness the resurrection because they understood that it is the resurrection of the Lord that gives meaning to everything and that is what must be proclaimed in the first place. Christ has risen. Christ is alive. Christ has conquered death. Christ is God because He has risen naturally. He was God before, but Christ is God. And when we know that Christ is God, and we proclaim that Christ is God because He has risen, we proclaim that He is infinitely love, merciful love from the Incarnation to the Resurrection. But we believe in Him because He is risen. Let us proclaim Him to all as the Apostles did. Christ is God. Let us keep His words. The, that is, let us defend His message. Let us practice His message and proclaim that He is risen. Amen.